Moral Rights, Wikipedia Article Audio Moral rights are rights of creators of copyrighted works generally recognized in civil law jurisdictions and, to a lesser extent, in some common law jurisdictions. They include the right of attribution, the right to have a work published anonymously or pseudonymously, and the right to the integrity of the work. The preserving of the integrity of the work allows the author to object to alteration, distortion, or mutilation of the work that is prejudicial to the author's honor or reputation. Anything else that may detract from the artist's relationship with the work even after it leaves the artist's possession or ownership may bring these moral rights into play. Moral rights are distinct from any economic rights tied to copyrights. Even if an artist has assigned his or her copyright rights to a work to a third party, he or she still maintains the moral rights to the work. Burn Convention Worldwide Situation Table In Europe In Canada In China In Ghana In Hong Kong In India in Macau, in Taiwan, in the United States. Visual Artists' Rights Act Adaptation Right Langham Act Courtesy of Non-Attribution Moral rights were first recognized in France and Germany, before they were included in the Berne Convention for the Protection of Literary and Artistic Works in 1928, 37 Canada recognizes moral rights in its Copyright Act. The United States became a signatory to the Convention in 1989, and incorporated a version of moral rights under its copyright law under Title 17 of the U.S. Code. Some jurisdictions allow for the waiver of moral rights, 44 to 45 in the United States, the Visual Artists' Rights Act of 1990 recognizes moral rights, but applies only to a narrow subset of works of visual art. Some jurisdictions like Austria differentiate between narrow and wide moral rights. Whilst the former is about integrity of the work, the latter limits usages, which may harm the author's integrity. Some copyright timestamp services allow to publish allowed usage intentions of the author to prevent a violation of such wider moral rights. Through the Rome revision of the Berne Convention in 1928, the Berne Convention accepted two forms of moral rights, paternity and integrity. These rights are included in Article 6 BIS of the Berne Convention as follows. Independent of the author's economic rights, and even after the transfer of the said rights, the author shall have the right to claim authorship of the work and to object to any distortion, modification of, or other derogatory action in relation to the said work, which would be prejudicial to the author's honor or reputation. Legend In most of Europe, it is not possible for authors to assign or even waive their moral rights. This is following a tradition in European copyright itself, which is not regarded as an item of property which can be sold, but only licensed. Parties certainly can agree not to enforce them. There may also be a requirement for the author to assert these moral rights before they can be enforced. In many books, for example, this is done on a page near the beginning, in and amongst the British Library slash Library of Congress data. Section 14.1 of Canada's Copyright Act protects the moral rights of authors. The moral rights cannot be assigned but can be waived contractually. Many publishing contracts in Canada now contain a standard moral right waiver. Moral rights in Canada were famously exercised in the case of Snow v. The Eden Center Ltd. In this case Toronto Eden Center, a large shopping mall, 
had commissioned the artist Michael Snow for a sculpture of Canada geese. Snow successfully stopped Edens from decorating the geese with bows at Christmas. Article 20 of the Copyright Law of the People's Republic of China provides unlimited term of protection of the rights of authorship, alteration, and integrity of an author. As Article 55 of the same law provides retroactive protection of unexpired term on the date of entry into force of this law, the Chinese perpetual moral rights are retroactive as well. The 2001 version retains this provision and the original Article 55 becomes Article 59. Art 18, Copyright Act 2005 provides perpetual moral rights. The moral rights in art. 6 are for proper attribution and against any distortion, mutilation, or other modification of the work where that act would be or is prejudicial to the reputation of the author or where the work is discredited by the act. Moral rights is specified under Copyright Ordinance Division 4, starting from Section 89. Author of computer program does not have moral rights. Moral rights cannot be transferred unless on the death of moral rights holder. Moral rights are recognized under Section 57 of India Copyright Act. Section 57 of India Copyright Act refers to author's special rights. It states, the issue of moral rights was discussed in Amar Nath Segal v. Union of India and Ors. The case pertained to a mural that was commissioned in 1957 by Government of India during construction of Vijayan Bhavan at New Delhi. The mural in question was made of bronze had span of 140 feet sweep of 40 feet. The mural remained on display and was much appreciated till pulled down in 1979 and then consigned to storerooms of Union of India. Delhi High Court specifically referred to Burn Convention in delivering judgment. Court also awarded damages Rs 500,000 and also decreed in favour of the Amar Nath Segal that he would have an absolute right to recreate the mural at any place and right to sail the same. The court accepted existence of moral rights despite the work being commissioned work and copyright had passed over to Union of India and suit being brought 1-3 YARS after the said act. Article 41 of the Decree Law and.043-99-M slash slash provides inalienable, unrenounceable and imprescriptible author's personal rights. In Taiwan, the Copyright Act has provided authors perpetual moral rights with regard of attribution and protection against alteration in bad faith, even if the works are in the public domain, as follows. Moral rights have had a less robust tradition in the United States. Copyright law in the United States emphasizes protection of financial reward over protection of creative attribution. 13. The exclusive rights tradition in the United States is inconsistent with the notion of moral rights as it was constituted in the civil code tradition stemming from post-revolutionary France. When the United States acceded to the Berne Convention, it stipulated that the Convention's moral rights provisions were addressed sufficiently by other statutes, such as laws covering slander and libel. 30. Some individual states have moral rights laws, particularly pertaining to visual art and artists. However, it is unclear if these laws, or portions thereof, are preempted by federal laws, such as the Visual Artists' Rights Act. The Monty Python comedy troupe made a claim of mutilation in 1975 in legal proceedings against American TV network ABC for airing re-edited versions of Monty Python's Flying Circus. However, the case was primarily decided on the basis of whether the BBC was licensed in such a way as to allow ABC to edit the videos. Main article, Gilliam v. American Broadcasting
The Visual Artists' Rights Act of 1990 recognizes moral rights, but only as they apply to listed works of visual art. The VARA is part of the U.S. Copyright Code. VARA was ruled to not protect against disparaging Internet uses of listed works of visual art in Neely v. Name Media Inc. ETAL, in Docket 267 of VARA gives qualifying authors the following rights. These rights, however, are limited by fair use, per 17 U.S. Code 106A. Copyright holders have the right to control adaptations, or the preparation of derivative works. This right is given under copyright law. C-17 U.S.C. 106 Section 43 of the Langham Act governs false and misleading advertising, and can apply in some instances to attribution of protected works. However, it cannot be used to create moral rights for works outside of the Act. See Dastar v. 20th Century Fox Authors may choose to use a pseudonym to disclaim authorship of a particular work. One such pseudonym was Alan Smithy, a name used between 1968 and 1999 by discontented Hollywood film directors who no longer wanted to be credited. In case the work is unfinished, the use of a pseudonym may be considered an approval from the original author so the copyright owner could do whatever it takes to finish and market the unwanted work. The director of Highlander 2, Russell Mulcahy, wanted his name removed after the completion bond company took over film production but he was contractually obliged not to impugn the film and he was told that using a pseudonym would impugn it. Infinity, equals economic rights, equal to or same as economic rights. Article 25 of the Copyright Act 1928, Article 21 of the Copyright Act 1944, Article 21 of the Copyright Act 1948, Unchanged from the 1944 Act, Article 21 of the Copyright Act 1964, Unchanged from the 1948 Act, Article 26 of the Copyright Act 1985, Article 26 of the Copyright Act 1990, Unchanged from the 1985 Act, Section 3. Articles 15 to 21 of the Copyright Act 1992, with the article unchanged in the subsequent versions of the Copyright Act. Right to claim authorship, right to prevent the use of one's name on any work the author did not create, right to prevent use of one's name on any work that has been distorted, mutilated, or modified in a way that would be prejudicial to the author's honor or reputation right to prevent distortion, mutilation, or modification that would prejudice the author's honor or reputation, right to prevent the destruction of a work of art if it is of recognized stature.